BTEC Applied Science Unit 3 Investigating the Distribution of Plants. So, first of all, what exactly do we mean by the distribution? The distribution of a species, for example, in that field, what is the distribution of the daisies in that field? Well, two words we're talking location and population location as in where they are and population as in how many there are so distribution means location and population for example look at this field uh, comment on the distribution the distribution of the flowers in this field can you see any pattern any pattern in the location and any pattern in the population and what do you think might explain? I think the pattern should be pretty obvious as you go from left to right, the, the population gets less and less, doesn't it? What do you think might explain that? Maybe that's something to do with the amount of light, the amount of shading, or maybe it's near a stream, I don't know. So, investigating the effect of a named environmental factor on the distribution of a species. That's what it says in the specification. How does the something affect the distribution of something in an area? How does the uh, availability of water or the rainfall affect the distribution of uh, daisies in a particular area? Imagine we want to measure the distribution of daisies on the school field. Let's say I want to know that the population of daisies, how many daisies are there on the, the college field? Now, we're not going to measure them all. So what we do is we take samples. And uh, there's different ways we can take samples. And a very common way is to use something called a quadrat. So we take samples, for example, using a quadrat. Uh, a quadrat is basically just a square. Different types of quadrat. There's an open quadrat, uh, a gridded quadrat, or a point frame. On that last photo, that's a, that's a gridded quadrat, that one there. Now, an open quadrat uh, is typically 0.33 meters by 0.33 meters. So that means it has an area of 1 meter. Uh, 0.1 meters squared, yeah, if it's a third of a third, so 0.1 meters squared. Uh, the gridded quadrat may be made up of a, a certain number of little squares, and then a point frame is 10 pegs that touch the ground. How do you use them? Well, an open quadrat, what you might do with it is, let's say, I want to know what percentage of the quadrat is covered with a particular species or how many of a particular species there are in the quadrat uh, or what percentage of the quadrat is covered with grass. Uh, and then you would do that multiple times. You do it maybe 10 or 20 times randomly over the field. OK, and then use that data to calculate a value for the whole field how many of a particular species there are in the quadrat. For example, you could count how many daisies there are in the quadrat. You do that 10 times, and then you use your results to work out the total number of daisies in the field. Uh, quadrats, very important that they should be placed randomly. Don't just chuck them on the field. What you should do is produce a plan of the field uh, as a grid and then you've got x values and y values and then you use your calculator to generate random numbers and then kind of it's like a bit like playing battleships and then you decide randomly where you're going to take your samples where you're going to put your quadrats don't just chuck them out on the field that's not random you should take a large number of samples the more samples you take then the more reliable and valid your final answer will be. 
Obviously, I'm not going to say do it a hundred times because that would take hours and hours, but something like at least 10 samples, at least 10. 10 would be a minimum. Taking a very large number of samples would take a long time, so may not be practical. To work out the total number of daisies, I've already said this, you've got the area of the field is the big area. The area of your quadrats is the small area. Uh, you divide the big area by the small area and then multiply that by the number of daisies that you count. And that should give you a, an estimate for the total number of daisies. A gridded quadrat, um, different ways you could use one of these. They're used to collect frequency data. In other words, how many? Um, you could, for example, say how many squares have got a daisy in them. If you've got a gridded quadrat here, this one's got 25 little squares. So how many of those little squares have got a daisy in them? Three out of 25, 20 out of 25. And when would you do that? You'd possibly do that if there's lots and lots and lots of daisies. Even within a quadrat, there might be kind of 200 daisies and it's just not practical counting them all so what you would do is just say how many of the little squares have got a daisy in and that's a quicker way of doing it a point frame uh, 10 pegs go down and touch the ground uh, and basically what you would say is uh, how many of the pins, how many of the pegs actually touch a particular species? And then you would do that at lots of places randomly, and that would give you an idea. You could compare what's happening at different places using a point frame. This is important, a transect. Now, a transect is just basically a line. A line of quadrats is a transect. You would use a transect if your independent variable is distance. If I want to know how the distribution of daisies varies with the distance from a stream or the distance from a path or the distance from a tree, if your independent variable is distance, then you do a transect, yes? You put your quadrats in a line. You can have a continuous transect, quadrat, 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 or you can have an intermittent one. So a quadrat and then a gap and then another quadrat and then a gap, depending on the distance involved, okay? So again, if distance is involved, then you would do a transect, either a, a belt transect or a line transect. So uh, here's some for you to have a think about. What technique could you use to investigate each of the following? Describe how you would do it. Uh, I suggest you pause the video and have a think and make some notes for yourself. See how much you remember from what we've been talking about. And my answers are them. And I'll leave it to you to have a read of them. Again, there are different ways of doing it, but this is how I would go about doing it. 